Well, good morning. Trust everyone found their way safely to seminary this morning. To open your Bibles to Psalm 30. This will be our text this morning. That's found on page 585 in the Red Bibles in the pews. Um, for those who need that help. Hear the word of the Lord. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and have not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cry to you for help, and you have healed me. O Lord, you have brought me up from Sheol. You have restored me to life from among those who go down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, O you his saints, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, and his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may tarry for the night, but joy comes in the morning. As for me, I said in my prosperity, I shall never be moved. By your favor, O Lord, you made my mountain stand strong. You hid your face. I was dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cry, and to the Lord I plead for mercy. What profit is there in my death if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it tell of your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be merciful to me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned for me my mourning into dancing. You have loosed my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness, that my glory may sing your praise and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. Join me in a word of prayer. Holy God, Lord, how we need you so much. Lord, you have given us your word that we may uh, know you, that we may seek you, and that we may obey you. But Lord, we often turn our hearts and ourselves away from it. Holy Spirit, give us ears to hear what you would have to say to us in your word this morning. In Christ's name, I pray. Amen. This morning, we continue to look at Psalms in the life of David. And as we have heard the previous messages we have been given, it is my hope that you have come to see a consistent theme in each of these Psalms, the theme of remembrance whether crying out to God in distress or thanking the Lord for saving him from his troubles or even calling God to exact vengeance upon his enemies. David always takes time to remember the kindness and goodness of his holy God. But perhaps there is no other psalm that quite rivals Psalm 30 in remembering not only the kindness and goodness of God, but also his providence. His providence that establishes and preserves David in the hopelessness and darkness of his soul. And this morning I want to exhort you to remember the providence of God which establishes and preserves you. And to that end, I want to focus on two areas of question in this matter. First, why? Why should you remember the providence of God? And secondly, how? How should you remember God's providence? First, we look at why. Why should we remember God's providence? I have two points here. And the first one is, we forget that we are sinful, finite, and needy creatures. Look with me again at verse 6. As for me, I said in my prosperity, I shall never be moved. David forgot that the Lord had prospered and blessed him. Instead, he came to believe that he had prospered himself. This forgiveness is not a mere loss of memory. As one struggles to remember his Hebrew vocabulary for Dr. Williams' weekly quizzes, <laughs> nor is the result of some mental illness 
but this forgetfulness finds its beginning in the sinful dispositions of the heart. This change is not in heart is not something that was immediate, but happened over time. When God established David and, and blessed him as king over Israel, uh, he blessed him with abundance of riches and peace on all sides. And David was grateful for the blessings of the Lord. But over time, David allowed the sinful thoughts of pride and self-sufficiency to gain a foothold in his heart. He forgot that he was simply the receiver and that God was the good giver, good and perfect giver of all things. It seems today that our American culture has forgotten about the providence of God in its reliance and focus upon the self-sufficiency, all power, self-sufficient, all-powerful will of man. Over the winter break, I went to see uh, the movie Unbroken. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you have heard about it. The story of Louis Zamperini, an Olympian and survivor of World War II uh, prison camp, Japanese prison camp, who came to faith in Christ after the war. Yet, instead of telling his story of reliance upon and conversion unto Christ, this movie elevates the unbroken will of man to stand on his own in the midst of trials and persecution. In the same way, David came to believe in his heart that it was he that had established and preserved himself and not the providence of God. And you also should be careful not to fall into the same sin of pride and self-sufficiency that David did. Maybe you are saying in your heart right now, I could never be like that. Friend, beware lest the same root of pride that came to full blossom in David finds its root in your soul. Indeed, it lies there waiting for you to listen to its lives of self-autonomy and self-esteem. Do not give yourself over to it, but instead remember God's providence. But perhaps there are those this morning who are going through trials which are not of your own doing. Friend, the Lord knows your situation, whatever it may be. Our Lord Jesus Christ himself humbled himself and took on the likeness of human flesh so that he could identify with us in all our trials. You can trust that he is working all things for your good despite what the circumstance may look like. Do not allow this time of trial to cloud your need for his grace. Cry out to him with your needs, whatever they may be. It could be that he has brought you to this place of darkness so that his light may shine through all the clear in your circumstance. The, uh, so why should we uh, remember the providence of God? Because we are sinful, finite, and needy creatures. Secondly, we should remember the providence of God because we forget the goodness of God. The providence of God and the goodness of God are two things that human nature seems to connect when good things happen, but disconnect when anything bad happens. When bad things start to happen, David realized that it was God behind the scenes. Look at verse, uh, look at the end of verse 7. You hid your face, I was dismayed. Yet, yet instead of despairing at his current situation, David chose to trust in the God that had brought him into this valley of the shadow of death. And this he recalled, or uh, why? Because in the midst of affliction, David remembered the goodness of God. And this he recalls in verses 1 through 5. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and have not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried to you for help, and you have healed me. O Lord, you have brought my soul from Sheol. You have restored me to life from among those who go down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, O you his saints, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, and his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may tarry for the night, but joy comes in the morning. 
David thanks the Lord for hearing his cry, for healing his afflicted state, and calls those who trust in the Lord to remember the goodness of God. And what is this reason for remembering God's goodness? It is the holiness of God. Look again at verse 4. Sing praises to the Lord, O you his saints, and give thanks to his holy name. Here the ESV does not catch, quite catch the exact wording of the Hebrew text. In fact, you may notice the footnote, which leads down to the bottom of the page and reads, Hebrew, to the memorial of his holiness. This is a slightly uh, better reading of the text, but I believe the New King James has a better rendering when it reads, Give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. There is something so beautifully good about God's holiness that David that causes David not only to burst out with joy, but to call all those who believe in the Lord to join him in this chorus of praise. Why does David connect the holiness of God, which leaves Isaiah shaking in his boots, with the goodness of God? Because without the holiness of God, there would be no goodness of God. Without the holiness of God, there would be no goodness of God. John Gill says it well. What is wisdom or knowledge without holiness but craft and cunning? Or what is power without it but tyranny, oppression, and cruelty? But God is glorious in holiness. This dives a luster to all his perfections and is the glory of them. And therefore none of them are or can be exercised in the wrong manner to any bad purpose. David could trust in the goodness of God because of the holiness of God. But there is more to the picture that he paints here. The Hebrew word for remembrance, <clears throat> zakar, is used many times in the scriptures to refer to God remembering his covenant promises to his people. And David can only bank in, in the goodness of God expressed in his holiness because of the binding covenant God made with him in 2 Samuel 7, promising that a descendant of David's would sit upon the throne of Israel forever. And are we not partakers of this same covenant promise in Jesus Christ, the greater son of David, who at this very moment sits at the right hand on high in majesty? Brothers and sisters, Whatever trials you may be going through, whatever trials you will go through, you have the great assurance that all things will work out for your good because the same Jesus who died now for your sins now sits on the throne of David as a judge of the whole earth. What greater reason could we possibly have to remember the providence of God? And surely this Jesus who sits in glory knows what it's like to suffer under the hand of God. The book of Hebrews says that he offered up prayers and supplications with vehement cries and tears to him who is able to save him from death. And that though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. He submitted himself to endure the wrath of God, which was due to us for our sins. And God heard him and accepted his sacrifice, beloved in Christ. What makes you think that God will do less for you? Remember his providence, which establishes and preserves you. That's <clears throat> how or why we should remember God's providence. Now to how. How should we remember God's providence? First, through prayer. There is perhaps no greater way to remember the providence of God than to pray. When David had fallen from his happy state, the first thing that he gave himself to was prayer. Prayer humbles the soul and reminds us that there is only one God in heaven and we are not him. 
Prayer teaches our hearts to rest our cares and worries in the hands of God, to remember his promises of grace and forgiveness in Christ towards us. Through prayer, the downtrodden soul communes with God, and the weary soul finds its rest in him. It is for this reason that our Lord Christ often removed himself from the busyness of his life to pray. And if the Son of God needed to pray while here on earth, how much more do we need to? Secondly, meditate on the glory of Christ. The discipline of meditation has seemed to fall now of practice in the church of late. While reading and memorizing scripture are both necessary disciplines that we need to not give up, one can come away having read and memorized God's word without really taking it in to his soul. This is where meditation comes in, and there can be nothing that is more worthy meditating on than the glory of Christ. Nothing else gives us a certain realization of the providence of God than the glory of him who is both our Savior and our King, who bore the wrath of God in our behalf and now sits enthroned in heaven on high. As we gaze on his glory through his spirit and his word, our hearts rest satisfied in delighting in him, and we remember that it is the hand of our Lord and Savior that holds us in his providential care. As John Owen says, Wherein doth the blessedness of the saints above consist? Is it not herein that they behold and see the glory of God in Christ? And what is the effect of it upon those blessed souls? Doth it not change them into the same image or make them like unto Christ? Doth it not fill and satiate them with joy, rest, delight, complacency, and ineffable satisfaction? Do we expect, do we desire the same state of blessedness? It is our present view of the glory of Christ, which, are, which is our initiation there into, if we are exercised in it until we have an experience of its transforming power in our souls. Brothers and sisters, give yourselves to prayer and meditation on the glory of Christ, and thereby remember the providence of God, which both establishes and preserves you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you knowing that, uh, or we often uh, miss the mark, and we do not acknowledge your providence in our lives, and we do not trust you and remember that you are in control. Lord, help us. Help us by your spirit. Help us by your word to recall, to remember that you are in control, <clears throat> that you are working all things for our good, and that we can trust in you. In Christ's name. <clears throat>